Well, it will be entirely unworkable because you will then say that there is no relationship between the members of the legislature and the party. They are independent of the party. They can take whatever decision they like. It will be destructive of, if you ask me, the basic structure of a, of a system of governance which, uh, which, which allows the party and the legislatures to be uh, intertwined in matters where Malas, the decisions have to be taken on various very significant issues as they come up in the assembly or in parliament. So the whip is really a person who is authorized by the political that's, party. That's correct. That's how it functions. Malas, that's how the because the direction has to be given by the political party. That's, that's, you can't keep on giving a direction. It's a larger body. Yeah, that's right. So therefore, it delegates its power and it authorizes a person who will then yeah. give a direction on which way to vote in the assembly. In matter when, I, when it came up before the law commission, it will be disastrous for democracy, disastrous for the country if the legislature party is allowed to act independent of the political party. Political party which either sends the MLAs who because of majority form the government yes. or they could even send members of legislative assembly who will be sitting in the opposition. That's, that's correct. So nevertheless, the controlling factor has to be the, party. Will be the political party. Yes. Uh, which will through its MLS operate either as because, because they are there because of the party. They they are the, their the state mandate. is the mandate of the party. That's correct. And therefore, how they yes. function in the house is determined by the mandate which has That's brought them into the house. That's correct. Exactly, yes. Madam. Yes. Yes. No, and I think that is seems to be a fair understanding of the ten schedule of that. Ten schedule has it to has to be linked right. to it. Madam, you have to maintain the integrity of the political party right. within the house, its programs. Its views, its views on reservation, its views on the ten schedule, its views on well, its foreign policy. Individual members of the legislature don't decide on foreign policy issues, well, the party decides. And party systems are such that you have committees where well, people who are in the past also, who are members of the party, who have experience in foreign policy, who have been ex-ministers of foreign policy, well, they become members of the committee, they advise the party as to what position should be taken and a matter comes up, the legislators are only told that this is what should be done. Within that framework, you can make your case out. So they articulate the views of the party that's, house. That's correct. Yeah. One important distinction is sorry, sorry. 15 seconds, a bizarre example of how the party governs. Very interesting, apropos a lot of I happen to be chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee in 2011. And the most contentious Lokpal bill came. We had a report signed by all except three dissents. Three dissents are all, every 31 member committee, which is a mini parliament, everybody signed all political parties, 17 political parties. Matter went to Rajya Sabha. All of them supported the report because they had signed it. Overnight, what is the party stand of one particular party? I'll not name it. Changed. The matter came to Lok Sabha. The same party which has signed took a different stand in Lok Sabha because the instructions from the party to the legislative wing of the Lok Sabha was that no, this has to be opposed. Lokpal has to be opposed. This is in the record of parliament. So when the party decides, this is an extreme example that the party which had agreed with the report actually opposed it in Lok Sabha because the members well as are only legislators, but they received the instructions. It's an important, well-known regional party, but the policy changed that no, we must oppose Lokpal, therefore it was opposed in Lok Sabha. So that was the best validation of this kind of example. Any and number they, of examples like that, any number of examples. It's a reverse engineering. <laughs> It's a political the issue of so many other factors. The legislative uh, members controlling the party is actually reverse engineering. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Therefore, these documents become exceptionally important because they will determine the outcome of this litigation. It suddenly, it could not have happened on the 21st of June, Mullahs. This sudden realization that this great injustice has been done, Mullahs. Obviously, this was planned. Well, as if anybody had any grievance of this nature, it would be in public statements, it will be in organizational meetings. After all, this is from 2018, we are in 2023 now, Malaz. Not a single statement anywhere. So obviously, and what this statement is being made from Assam. Why Assam? So it's not something, it's all pre-planned, it's a conspiracy. It's not something that happened overnight. And you're talking about poll promises. Let me, Malaz, talk of history then. Malaz, the poll promise was broken at the time when Malaz, uh, Devinder Fadnavis and Ajit Pawar were, uh, were sworn in in the early hours of the morning by the governor. What about that poll promise? So let's not go into politics. Ah, what? I was just going to say that now, now you are trenching into no, no. politics. No, but this is all politics. You are now, you are now leaving the area of consequence. No, no, no. I, I, Malaz, I said it in the context of the grievance that he has made. 
has made a vehemence of bold promise. No, we are not at all, Mr. Yes, thank you. Not. So, Malas, let's go. I, that's why I said we are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just, stay, stay, sir. But therefore, Mr. Sibyl, ultimately, I mean, we are just sort of pushing your argument to its logical conclusion in constitutional terms. Yes. Therefore, what you are saying is that, look, when Eknath Shinde was nominated as a group leader and the whip was then nominated, the whip was also notified. It was at the behest of the party, yes. the beat at the MLA's meeting. Correct. An alteration of that position was made at the meeting which was chaired by uh, Mr. Uddhav Thakre. The legislators could not have either abstained from the meeting which was convened by the party president, nor could the legislators have replaced the whip or the group leader. That's correct. So that all that they did was really therefore invited it was contrary to law and therefore invited a disqualification under the 10th schedule. All this really then leads us to this, that therefore they have incurred the disqualification. The, uh, they have incurred a disqualification. That's correct. Now, having said that, therefore this is therefore a case where the speaker has to ultimately decide upon the disqualification which they have incurred, isn't it? I understand. That is, you know, Mr. Mr. Sibyl, that is an area which we are not able to come to bridge. I will, Malaz, I will. Malaz, I tell you, Lord, the problems in that in that area. But the kind of just, just problems in the area, we see that. But, you know, also we understand the significance of the point which you have made, which is a very significant point for constitutional democracy, that ultimately the party is supreme. Yes. And legislators get there into the House or the Parliament or the Legislative Assembly on the mandate of the party, what the party means to the people. Right. Right. Therefore, you are really elected as a representative of the party. Your behavior must be governed by what the party dictates. Right. And a group of legislators, whether you are one third or one tenth or, or even 75 percent, that's right, cannot be really determinative of right. the wishes of the parties. You can alter that position if the party authorizes you right. or you leave right. the party. Right. Uh, so far, so good. I mean, that power, that's a very significant point which you have made. But I understand. That, the first point, the point, the next, next point, point. I mean, what's the consequence? Yeah, I, I will, but I'll attempt. Yeah. Which, which you are try, really telling us that, look, the facts you tear you in the face. Now, why go to the speaker? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's what my submission is. What is They're it that fold. the speaker is going to do in this? It, it could be twofold. One, as you say, well, the speaker himself cannot be trusted as an as an impartial arbiter. I, I withdraw that brothers, because because we are talking about the constitutional That's position. Right. The second would be the second would be where the facts are so clear. Yeah. Then you take the decision which yeah. the speaker ought to have decided that there is only one and one conclusion. That's right. That Mr. Sibyl, honestly Sibyl, that is right. that is a matter of disquiet for uh, speaking for myself. I mean should the court be taking into that uh, I, I, entering into well, that area? That's, that's an area of... Lordships have been persuaded in the past. I hope to persuade you in the future as well. There are very serious ramifications. No, just as yours, you know, the ramifications... I will, I will mother the address your lordships. Okay. The ramifications which you have referred to for constitutional democracy, if individual legislators start bucking the party discipline, we, there are very serious ramifications that we start taking over these functions. Very dangerous. No, you, Malaz, what happened was... Um, in one particular case, which is the Constitution bench, Malas, where they said that this illegality cannot be continued even for a day. So we will take the decision. Because the they are occupying the post of the minister. This cannot continue even for a day. I will not send it back. Yes, we will we will take it. wrong. This is the system which we have now assumed to ourselves as we the people. And when the courts try and breach the system, there's a it's a very no, no, I, I, Munez, I understand. You know, that's what is worrying us. I Munez, mean, I, 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 put it to you right up. Quite uh, frankly, the quite frankly, a constitutional court should be worried because if you create this as a precedent, it can happen in other situations as well, and that not be a good precedent. But I am not disputing that. Please, please, I am not. I, I know the limitations of a constitutional court. I know that, Munez. But what has happened in this case, unfortunately is that this has happened because of a judicial order. This would never have happened. All right, we also go to this extent that, you know, if some, a situation transpires because of a judicial order, we are not saying that it has. Yes, I understand, that. I understand your argument. Yes. And therefore, it's the duty of a court 
to rectify a situation which emerges as a result of its own order. That's right. All right. Um, in various other contexts, we always say active. You have said that in several judgments. Neminum gravibit. Yes. But assuming that is so, yeah. and we place ourselves in the position in which the court was, say, immediately before the 27th. Yes. What would the court then have done? That look, let the speaker decide. Keeping aside the issue of two day or seven day, yes, yes. Let the let the speaker decide. Yes. So if we have to restore the position as it would have been, but for that order of the twenty seventh, we would have said, let the speaker decide. Yes. Possibly, it, your argument would be if the until the speaker is deciding, no trust vote. Let them take a decision first and then because the trust vote. Because will be everything helped there after that happened because of this order. But therefore, if you have to restore the situation as it stands immediately before the order, interim order of this court, we can restore it by saying that, well, the, the speaker has to take a decision. Right. As That's a date. Date. Yes. Had they incurred a disqualification. Yes. But we, it would be very difficult for us to take over that function. Well, let, I don't mind, Malala. Let that deputy speaker decide. I have no problem with that. That's what happened in therefore which which so deputy which, speaker? Which the speaker Manas who was denied the who was denied the right to continue the, with the disqualification. This has happened in the other case. So also. then we restore a putative state of affairs. Yes, your lordships have done that. overtaken by events. In Nabam Remia, your lordships have done exactly that. Exactly that. Because when I argued this before the, the, the constitution bench, then I said, My Lords, what is happening is you let things happen and then you will tell me later that we can't reverse it. He said, no, we will reverse Mr. it. Mr. Sibyl, then you support Nabam Rebia's course of action when it suits you. And when Nabam Rebia is creating a problem, you wanted to... No, Mother, that because Rebiya. there are two different issues in Nabam Rebia, Mother. Right. Well, I'm sorry, Mother. Yeah. You can't put that argument. No, no, we are not. We are not all. <laughs> there are two different issues. Mother, in fact, I was wondering when your lordships are going to decide to refer it to seven yeah. because this is this is a real problem. Good. That's that's intrinsically at the heart of the matter, which is why I said you take it up as an as, as, a, as, a, as a preliminary uh, submission, because ultimately this can only be decided. But Mr. Sibal, look at the consequence. You today have a speaker. You have a speaker in a democratically elected house. Tomorrow you may have a speaker in parliament. Then the Supreme Court said, sorry, we are now overriding the mandate of this speaker. We will retrace our steps back to say now something which is eight months ago, <laughs> restore a speaker who is now no longer holding the office of the speaker and we tell you, we now he's decide that somebody is the speaker. He is still deputy speaker. Huh? He is still deputy speaker. And ask that speaker but he's still or deputy, deputy speaker, speaker to take a consequence. I mean, he is still deputy speaker. Well, it's all right. Well, oh, well, one second, one second, one second. Hold on, hold on. You got a lot of hurdles to cross. But anyway. Uh, let me let me you're all very seasoned constitutional law but you understand you know what is yeah, worrying no, us no, I, I'm, I'm not going to you I'm not going to what is worrying us okay. make a proposition that will in fact destroy the fabric of a constitutional structure that has been in place since independence well, since we were a republic well, I'm not going to do that but see the what what has happened first of all the no stays I mean uh, 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 they are given time till 12th July but more important on the 29th this court says that we will set aside everything that happens thereafter. See, what, what, where we are now. We say, please stay everything. Don't allow the trust vote to happen. Decide this matter. It could have been decided on the 12th of July. Then the court tells us, no, 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 doesn't matter. On the 29th, all that is subject. Now your lordships are telling me, how can it be subject? Now your lordships are telling me, rightly maybe, that how can we go back on 27th? But that's exactly because of the two court orders. What do we do? But the court order was also prompted by what your speaker did. Now I said, you stay. Don't do. Don't allow them to take the oath. Don't have a trust vote. We said that. Then on 29th June, that order is passed. Had Thereafter, all matters are placed. Your speaker had your speaker chosen to follow the law. By giving them seven days. No, Malas, the law is number one. But the law is hollow horn. Court would have, the court would have said, all right, go and respond to the law. Law is hollow horn. Malas, I tell you, Lord Chitra, now I can't in hindsight say what the court should have done was stayed everything, allowed them to file a reply and allow after 12th of June for the speaker to decide. But what was the problem? There was no problem. But the status quo changed. Malas, they were given time till 12th of July. All right, let them give time. 
despite the fact that it is contrary to Holhorn, forget it. It should have been given time. They should have filed a reply. The deputy speaker would have decided, why allow the status quo to be changed? And that also, because a judicial order says, doesn't matter, even if the status quo is changed, we'll restore it back. So we had two judicial orders then. And now you're rightly, you know, rightly puts, puts, we're now under, uh, uh, under the proceedings of the House, a new speaker has been appointed. But then you yourself said that we will deal with it. All that will be subject to. So essentially, we'll therefore have to invalidate the trust vote which took place on the. Or because it was only on the basis of these 39. A, that trust, they, a trust vote which we will have to invalidate, a trust vote which never took place. So no, 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 no. Even the trust vote that took place on 4th is subject to. Malaz, I'm sorry. 